The History of Riddings Park Part 2 A Public Park for Ozzeltwistle In 1907, plans were put forward to purchase the Riddings estate in order to create a public park. Riddings was ideal, as it was available and provided a mature, if somewhat neglected landscape, ready for conversion into a recreational facility for the people of Oseltwistle. The story of how the property was turned into a park and its early development is recounted in some detail in the original committee minute books of Oseltwistle Urban District Council. The main impetus for the local council acquiring Riddings Park came from Mr. Arthur Hargreaves, a local industrialist and philanthropist who served on the council between 1904 and 1922. Councillor Hargreaves had done much work to establish the idea and thought a park would enhance the value of the surrounding properties. The asking price was £5,000 plus ground rent of £20 per annum. Councillor Walsh didn't think it was worth it and that if the workers wanted some green space then it wasn't far for them to walk out of the town. The problem was that large embezzlement frauds, including the Gourlay case in 1879, had left the council tens of thousands of pounds in debt, an enormous sum for the time, and so any extra expense had to be justified. They asked Sir George Buller for funding, but he turned them down, citing increasingly onerous taxes. Although plausible, it did seem mean-spirited to some at the time, particularly as he had invested a large part of his Lancashire-earned fortune building Kinloch Castle on an island he bought for himself off the west coast of Scotland. However, the money was found, and on the 8th of February 1909, the councillors accepted terms for the acquisition of Riddings. The subcommittee had met with Mr. Hornby Watson, who agreed to lease the hall and the grounds to the council for seven years at an annual rent of £150, plus ground rent of £20 on the premises and the option for the council to buy it outright for £3,750 at the end of the term. A park committee was appointed to manage the hall and grounds, and Mr. Joseph Warwick took up the position of park keeper on the 7th of April 1909 on a wage of 25 shillings per week. Later in the year, he was given a uniform and matching cap at a cost of three pounds, two shillings and sixpence. The park was officially opened by Councillor Hargreaves on Sunday the 29th of May 1909 at 3 p.m accompanied by the Church and Ozzeltwistle Brass Band. Local newspaper articles were positive, and it is clear from the report on the opening of the park that there were high aspirations for the future development of Riddings. At the rear of the quadrangle approached through a stone-built picturesque tower is an oval-shaped lawn cut out a few feet below the level of the surrounding land, which offers possibility of being transformed into a pond or it might be converted, with a little expenditure, into a tennis court. The reporter also acknowledged the mansion, and whilst referring to its magnificence, also held the view that, for the purposes of the park, it would have been preferable to have had the ruins of a castle rather than the mansion as it stands today. Equally, people were guarded about what could realistically be achieved at the park, and this concern was voiced in the same article. The only thing to dim their hopes was that such things would probably remain a dream for some years, as the council were unable to accomplish much out of a twopenny rate. This in effect is the whole story of the public park at Riddings, and the council minutes record a continuing reliance on gifts and constant concerns over budget for the provision of facilities such as a bowling green, tennis courts and a bandstand. Consequently, temporary venues had to be found for these facilities, and many years passed before they were built. Trees, seats, a water fountain, a sundial, and a pair of terracotta vases from the Accrington Tile and Brick Company were all donated within the first few months, and nine-inch pipes were painted and used as litter bins. Initially, the old iron railings were deemed unnecessary for the park and were removed and sold to the sewage committee. Once new boundary railings had been erected and bylaws posted, it was down to the park keeper to clear and manage the site with whoever and whatever was available. As an example of creative thinking, 
Within the first year, tenders were invited for grazing sheep and cattle in the parkland, but in 1910 the grass was cut and sold off to Mr. J. A. Duxbury for a pound. In December 1910, Mr. W. Simpson offered the council the Old Market Cross, which at the time stood on Union Road, to commemorate the coronation of King George V, and this was installed in February 1911. It was agreed that the former dog kennels were the most suitable site for an aviary, and over the following few years a myriad of birds were donated, including silver pheasants, fantail pigeons, turtle doves and bantam hens. By 1912, the new entrance created off Fielding Lane had been paved and gateposts from Paddock House Lodge had been installed, while the oval croquet lawn was converted into a bowling green. In 1913, it was resolved that the sunken oval lawn beyond the tower should be utilised as a tennis court, and a tennis set should be purchased for no more than £10. In 1914, Mr W. Simpson again showed his great support for the park by presenting the Japanese lantern. A new boundary wall and railings were installed along Park Lane, and the entrance gates were replaced with ones which were gifted by Reverend Harris from the entrance to Emmanuel Church. A children's playground was added to the northern corner of the park in the same year, and following complaints of waterlogging, the main footpaths were asphalted. The hall itself was used as accommodation for the groundskeeper, and in 1917 the ground floor was converted into a museum and art gallery. This struggled to make an impact and relied on donations from the public. Exhibits included an American yellow-tailed fish, an Australian iguana skin, a death's head moth, golden beetles, various oil paintings, a Boer rifle, bandolier and hat. Permanent tennis courts eventually opened in 1925 in the former walled kitchen garden and two extra terraces were constructed as a new playground including a putting green. In 1930, the guns and carriages that stood outside the hall were broken up and sold, with the proceeds going to the Earl Hague Fund. The following year, a request was made to construct a paddling pool, but this was deferred by the council, and instead the playground was replaced by a new bowling green, and extra paths were installed. By 1932, Riddings Hall was proving expensive to maintain, and the council began to debate its future. Whilst recognising its position in history, it had no great architectural importance and R. Pilling and Son of Burnley won the contract to pull down the hall on the 22nd of August 1938. Only the orangery was left intact, which served as a temporary pavilion for the bowling green. Then the world decided to have a little war. The Second World War saw the park utilised for food production. The park was ploughed up for vegetable cultivation, the flower beds converted to vegetable plots, and the flower greenhouses converted to grow tomatoes. The park railings were taken down and given to the war office, and in their place a privet and thorn hedge was planted. It was also recorded in the minute books that female labour had been engaged to work in the park. The park's first warden had died in 1937 and been replaced by Mr. T. G. Butler. His son, Jack, recounted several experiences of his father's time in Riddings during interviews in the 1990s, and one particular anecdote concerns a German spy who was using the old folly as a beacon to guide Nazi planes. He escaped an attempted ambush on account of the noisy gravel paths which gave his pursuers away. Few developments took place after the war. In 1961, the council planned to demolish the old tower, as it was considered dangerous for children, but fortunately it was spared. In 1965, the rockery by the Market Cross was removed and replaced with floral borders, and in 1967, a new bandstand was finally built, the temporary one having been in use since 1911. Pets Corner is first mentioned in 1971. Other developments included a paddling pool which finally got the green light and a new children's play area in the sunken oval. Following that, nothing of note took place until 1997 when Hindburn Borough Council, together with the East Lancashire Groundwork Trust and the Friends of Reddings Park, 
put together a scheme for a radical overhaul of the entire facility. A public park for Oseltwistle was written by Ken Moss, with thanks to Hindburn Borough Council, Accrington Library, Lancashire Records Office, Chris Burnett Associates, and John Wayne. Music was by the Grimethorpe Colliery Band. The programme was produced by Maverick Productions for Hindburn Borough Council. <laughs>